What's up everybody, Eric B. Preston here. If you don't know me, I'm a licensed agent with eXp and I also own a digital marketing agency, a digital marketing coaching program uh, and got some other exciting stuff uh, in the works. Um, in this video, I wanna to talk to you about why most agents fail. Uh, this is especially a hot topic this year as so many people have gotten into real estate and it hasn't quite been what they've expected. It's a dog eat dog world, we know that. Um, and there's a very, very high failure rate. So I'm gonna give you my uh, three big reasons why I think people actually fail in this industry and what you might be able to do uh, to get around that. So uh, let's just get into it. Um, my number one reason why agents fail is because they don't treat it like a business or a sales job, okay? Now, I came from a background in sales. Um, I was a part of a pretty large sales team. I played a big role in that at a digital marketing agency that served real estate actually. Um, and I had a ton of success in my sales career before I ever got into real estate. Now that was a big leg up. I also had a lot of interpersonal skills I developed from uh, working in hospitality, which uh, I actually believe goes a really long way. As a bartender, I was managing bars and working behind a bar for six years. So. Um, those kind of soft skills, I think, really helped me in you know a lot of areas of life and in business. But um, you have to understand that if you don't have a sales background, and if you don't have a people-facing background where you can effectively communicate and talk to people, real estate's going to be harder for you. Okay. Now, when you come into real estate, you need to treat it as a business. You need to know your numbers. You need to treat it as such, and you need to basically treat it like a sales job because that's what it is. You're selling homes. You are gonna be out there selling people on why they should use you instead of someone else to facilitate the transaction of their home. A lot of people get into real estate and they have this kind of rose colored glasses on. They think that essentially people are gonna help them get there like in a traditional job. Uh, they're gonna have like a manager who's gonna be on top of them, who's gonna make sure they're successful. And that couldn't be further from the truth. You get into real estate and there's a lot of people who promise you all these big things but then the reality is you're left totally to your own devices. So make sure you understand that that's probably gonna be the case, um, unless you get into a situation, which I'll tell you about in a minute, but um, essentially you gotta understand that this is a sales job. You gotta treat it like a business and you have to treat it like a sales and marketing position really, because that's at the end of the day what you are. You're a salesperson and a marketer. So that's my number one reason is don't get it twisted. Uh, you are in real estate as a salesperson and the good salespeople are the ones that are successful. So if you don't have a sales background, if you don't have a marketing background, you need to go out and learn those skills. You're going to have to. <clears throat> it's like any entrepreneur will tell you, I can tell you from my own experience, as an entrepreneur, you need to know every aspect of, of your business. You just do. You don't just have one siloed area of uh, a business that you're hyper focused in like you do in any regular job. You literally have to have your hands in every part of the business. And that goes the same for uh, being a real estate agent. Um, and I think that's why <clears throat> it's, a good, it's a good idea to partner with either mentors or a team when you get into real estate so you can kickstart yourself and learn and invest in yourself, right? You have to pay for knowledge, uh, which I'll talk more about in a minute, um, in order for you to level up your skills for you to actually be successful. If you go in the, with the mindset of being cheap, it's just not going to work, which brings me to my second point, which is the second reason I see a lot of agents fail. Um, and mind you, in my mentorship groups, like we don't have a lot of people fail at all. Actually, I can't think of one, but a lot of people come into real estate and they do fail because they, they don't have anything to invest. If you're coming into real estate with no sales experience and no money to invest, <clears throat> your chance of failure is way higher. Now, I'm just being honest with you. If you come into real estate and you have nothing to invest, I'm gonna say it again, it's gonna be hard for you. If you come into real estate, it's better that you have a nest egg where you can invest in advertising, marketing, promoting yourself, but not just promoting yourself, generating leads for you to work. If you don't have that, that's the number one reason why I really see people struggle initially, is we tell them the blueprint and they essentially are like, well, I don't have any money to invest. <clears throat> and we're like, okay, well, if you don't have money to invest, then you have to hustle. <clears throat> and a lot of people are like, well, I don't wanna get on the phones or <clears throat> I don't wanna you know, invest all this time and energy into making YouTube videos or I don't wanna do you know, door knocking or whatever. Now, I'm not saying you should go out there and do door knocking. I think there's better ways to build your business. 
Um, but you have to be willing to make yourself uncomfortable is my point. You have to be willing to go out there and get on the phone with strangers who maybe go to going to networking events, like maybe you're generating leads from online, you're gonna have to prospect those leads. Maybe you're getting leads from social media, you're gonna have to have conversations with these people. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if you're uncomfortable with that, and you do not have hustle, then you're going to need money. And the people who are successful have both. Because if you have if you come into real estate with say like $20,000 in your bank, and you can say, okay, I have a marketing budget of $2,000 a month, you can really work with that. I have clients who came in with uh, a more a more moderate budget than that, like less, probably about $1,000 a month, who have put together 12 to 15 deals in their first year from putting a little bit of money into what we're teaching, which is like investing in some Google ads and investing in yourself um, to actually convert the leads that you generate. But if you don't have any tangible, like if you don't have any, how do I say, um, experience in sales and you don't have any experience as an entrepreneur, that's going to be hard for you, one. And then if you don't have anything to invest, that's going to make it harder because you're really going to have to hustle um, unless you have a very vast personal network you can pull from. Um, you're going to have to go out there and generate business. And anyone who tells you otherwise is not telling you the truth. So this is just me being real with you. If you're thinking about getting into real estate, you have to have some hustle to succeed in real estate. And eventually you want to build leverage around that hustle. And it takes an investment of money to do that. So like I just had a two month check in with a client. They were budgeting four thousand a month in marketing and they've already closed 90, sorry, eighty seven thousand in GCI in two months because they invested 5,000 a month with us, right? So if you have some, and this was, mind you, this was not a new agent. So this was someone who had skills around how to talk to people and convert leads, right? So this person was someone who essentially knows how to talk real estate and had a budget, right? Now you can very, very easily, I do this all the time with my clients. I have several clients who are doing 100 plus deals a year, several clients who are in the like 20 to 60 range, um, and that's a very, very comfortable living, right? And these people have, are investing back in their business. They're investing in lead generation. They're investing in mentorship. Um, and so that really brings me to my third point, which is um, the <clears throat> third main reason why I think agents fail is they don't get in with the right mentors or they don't prioritize mentorship. Now, the best investment you can make and the further I get in my entrepreneurial journey, uh, the more I realize this is true, which is you need to invest in yourself. You need to invest in coaching and mentorship. Um, and it's not to say every coach you're ever going to have is going to be exactly what you want. You're going to have some misses there and you have to accept that. Um, but mentorship is the reason um, I partnered with my mentor, Jason Smart, who does 450 deals a year. I partnered with him at EXP and that was one of the best decisions I could have made for my career because I was able to take what I know, my strong suits, which is digital marketing, Google ads, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. And then I'm actually able to take what Jason does, which is actually how to build a really big, profitable, sustainable, systemized business because he's been there, done that. He got out of production in three years. In his first year, he sold 135 homes. Why did he do that? Well, he had a budget and he had hustle, okay? And he had some mentorship. So. Jason came into the business, he had about, I think the story goes, he had about a $50,000 loan, um, invested fully in Google ads, marketing, hustled his ass off for that year, ended up doing 135 deals, which is absolutely unheard of. I don't think anyone's ever done that before. I'm quite confident no one's ever done that. But he had those things. But the thing is, he didn't just have them beforehand. Like he took out a loan, he invested that loan in an assistant and lead generation to give him leverage and he had hustle, so he created those things. So it's not to say you just need to be born with these things, he created them because he was motivated. And what you need to do is partner with people who've been there, done that, and have actually walked the walk. Because there's a lot of mentors out there who claim that, oh yeah, I'm a top producer, and I've been there, done that, and I've blah, 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 but they hide behind their numbers because they actually haven't built a big career, and they've only sold you know, 20 homes in their career. So if you're gonna partner with someone, like make sure you vet them well, make sure you ask them, hey, show me the papers, like show me the numbers, like how many deals have you done? How long did it take you to get there? Like, what are the numbers? What did you invest? Because someone who's been there, done that, will know their numbers. How much did you invest? How much did you get back on that investment? 
what were your three pillars in, in terms of marketing that you were most successful with? And what are the mar marketing pillars that you want to create in your business so that you can partner with the right person so you can learn from the right person? Because if you want to be like an Instagram rock star and that's your thing and you just want to be Instagram, TikTok, blah, 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 like it's possible to generate business that way. Of course it is, but it's going to take a lot of work and a long time to get there. So if that's really what you want to do, you should partner with someone who's built their business that way. If you want to partner with someone who's built their business, for example, in the way we do, which is by promoting uh, YouTube, Google ads, and then building leverage around you with people in the form of assistants and inside sales agents to work your leads. It's a proven system. It's very scalable. I mean, Jason's doing, you know, 450 deals a year. We've brought in a lot of people into our EXP group um, who are doing over hundred deals a year. Um, several seven figure agents, uh, several high six figure agents. Like Jason allows me to actually attract a lot of super amazing agents who want to learn from Jason, but they also want to learn from me on the Google and YouTube and online marketing front. And that's a very powerful combination. And um, anyway, if you're interested in that, uh, I'll put a link in the description. You can check out our group, the collaborative movement um, and what we offer, but that's not what this is about. I think, um, this video, I really wanted to pinpoint like the three main areas that most people fail, which is again, you come in and you don't treat it like a, a business or a sales position, like a full commission, 100% commission sales position, which is what it is. You treat it as if you have a consistent, reliable salary and you can slack off and make the same amount of money. Can't do that. Um, number two is you don't have anything to invest. If you're coming into real estate with no budget at all, it's going to be hard for you. It is. Uh, there is ways to generate leads for free. There is ways to generate business um, with your time. Of course there are. Is it gonna get you there quicker? No, if you have a budget, it's just gonna get you there faster. It's just math. If you put a thousand, two thousand dollars behind marketing with the right person, then you'll generate an abundance of leads. And if you get mentorship, reason three, on how to actually convert those leads, you're just gonna get there faster. It's just sensible. You're not gonna get a whole a volume of leads uh, through posting on Instagram or posting on TikTok or these other things. Generally, that takes a long time to get to that point where you become an influencer and you have a profile and you can actually generate leads organically. Like, I'll be the first to tell you 90% of my business in my agency is from my YouTube channel. 90%, that's insane. That doesn't cost me anything other than, it doesn't actually cost me anything because my YouTube channel makes me money. Um, but you're not gonna get there right away. And even me in my business now, I hired some uh, really high level coaches for my marketing company and they're having me now invest in paid ads. So I'm going to be investing a significant amount of money in paid ads to grow my um, Google ads agency. And I'm also launching a uh, do it yourself coaching program uh, where I'm going to be coaching people on Google ads and YouTube. So drop a comment if you want to information on that, that's going to be, I'm launching beta in September. Um, the formal program will launch in October. Um, but I'm basically gonna be coaching you on the systems that Jason and I have developed, including hiring and training inside sales agents to actually work your leads. Cause I'll tell you this right now, lead gen is absolutely essential. Investing in lead gen is essential. Um, most coaches out there these days will teach you that if they're good, like it's, a, it's essential to invest in lead gen period. The best in investment into lead gen, I believe is Google ads and YouTube. I'm really big on that. I think those are the two best places you can generate leads. Um, but you need to have a consistent predictable lead source that will give you a predictable, consistent conversion rate. And you can work on yourself and your skills to improve that conversion rate, but you need it to be predictable and consistent. So we generate like five to $10 leads for people. And the, it's just the more you spend, the more leads you generate. Higher quality leads from Google, people who are actively searching for things online. And then you, it's just a numbers game from there. And you have to play into the numbers. If you're trying to just post on social media or do these organic strategies, they're not consistent. They're the least thing but consistent. Even my YouTube channel in building my business to where it is now, which has been really successful for us, has not been consistent. There's been really down weeks. There's been really crazy weeks. And it honestly depends on when I put out content, which I've been a little busy to do lately. So um, I'm trying to really get back into that that was one of the ideas of making this video is I see a lot of people come into real estate this year because they lost their job in COVID last year. Maybe they lost a job from COVID this year. And a lot of people look to real estate as an independent career where they could make lots of money. But, and they probably know this because they tell you there's an 87% failure rate, right? Um, now we're fortunate in the collaborative movement. We don't have one single person um, that's actually left real estate or failed in real estate. Um, obviously, I'm sure it will happen eventually, like our group's over 200 people now. 
Um, it's not to say every single person's always going to succeed. Well, obviously not. We can give you the tools. We can give you the mentorship. We can give you the guidance. But if you don't go out there and execute, it's not going to work. Of course, that's any coach. That's any any coach ever should tell you that. Like, I can give you all the tools you need to succeed. There's been tons of case studies. I remember Jason came to this call I had recently. I was like, dude, bring some examples. Brings a piece of paper with 18 examples of people he took from nothing to multiple six figures or from six figures to like high, high six figures, seven figures. Um, so the stuff works. You just have to partner with people who actually have walked the walk. And that's why I say vet your sponsors. So um, again, anyways, I hope that's helpful for anyone who's thinking of getting into real estate. It's a tough business, it's a tough career, but it can be really rewarding at the end of the day. But you need to think like a business person. You need to think, okay, I'm gonna do all the work myself and I'm gonna get trench knowledge, as you should call it, which is I'm gonna go prospect leads, generate leads, work the leads, close the deals, uh, generate repeat and referral business from that, get the trench knowledge, which will probably take you a few years. And then you can look at building leverage around you and building a team so that you can actually step out of production and work on managing a business, okay? So that's what Jason does. He's been doing this for, I think, two and a half years now, maybe even three. He's been out of production, managing his team, and he spends 80% of his time on his coaching program, coaching other people on how to do what he's done in such a short amount of time. And it's all about building a business that's gonna allow you some time freedom and financial freedom, and you need to learn from people who understand that and have done that, okay? So anyways, I hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. As always, uh, be sure to like this video if you like it. Uh, give me a subscribe if you've been following me and you haven't done that yet. Um, otherwise, uh, let me know again if you guys have any questions in the comments and I will see you all in the next one.